This week that World Burles Day has been posting videos and um, other posts in relation to this very special and very important week. And so far we have heard at least from one author called Rev Lex Malone. But today we are going to hear from another author, a very special lady, the lady who is also the main force behind World Burles Day. Her name is Safira, and she is also the author of this book, Burles Go Bust. So what I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to be inviting Safira to this conversation, and I'm going to be asking her a few questions. So let's invite Safira to join us. Go. Now we're just waiting for her to pop in. Hey! Hello! Good evening! It's worked! <laughs> yeah, it did work. <laughs> Fantastic. So I'm holding your very book here. And um, I was just telling um, people who are watching that you are the author behind this very witty yet heart-wrenchingly sad at times book mm. and this is the health um, mental health awareness week and um, I have a few questions for you regarding uh, mental health and your book as well well thank you okay let's <laughs> try it. please feel free to ask yeah so let's go ahead and hello to everybody who's just joined us so why do you think that um, mental health and well-being are linked to burlesque well it's interesting i think there's just something really magical and free about burlesque where you get to have a you know stage name put on a costume all the glamour and you go into this alternate mode in a way mm -hmm. i just think that's very helpful for rebuilding your belief about yourself because the things you might have judged yourself for in your day-to-day -day life seem to disappear and, and suddenly everybody's larger than life and stronger on stage. So I yeah. think it, it helps. Absolutely. And I, I also, many times I hear that if people have had burlesque classes or even if they've gone to see a burlesque show, they all of a sudden they feel better about themselves. So that's obviously a huge, um, you know, thing that burlesque can give that feeling to somebody. Definitely. I'm just seeing Ninochka mm -hmm. has said burlesque makes a magic. I think Aww. that's very true. Yes, it really does. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just kind of thinking how beautiful it is that someone I've never met on the other side of the world on the internet. N Ninochka, where are you from? I have a feeling she's Finnish. <laughs> but I could be wrong. <laughs> I just remember seeing that uh, name before, but maybe there's another Ninochka. I don't know if she can. Maybe she'll answer in a little bit. But yeah, it's it's true that some uh, people who have gone on stage, they've been very broken and then Burles has some, somehow made them feel very whole and confident and uh, just positive about life again. So, and your book just, uh, you know, it's it's all in here. It's it's everything is here, you know, th those kind of feelings. Yeah. So what was it like for you to write that book? It was difficult because it is quite personal and I just realized suddenly that's going to be in black and white, you know, forevermore. People can read it and refer to it and because I have a corporate job, I thought, how is it going to be if any of my colleagues read it? Mm. Um, so that was hard, but it was very fun, funny and, and at times really enjoyable. It was very, yeah. very interesting process. Yeah. Did you kind of feel better after you've written your book about, I don't know, experiences or, or emotionally or, or was it just you didn't have any sort of, oh, it's kind of, you know, in a way that you put it on paper. Sometimes people say that you kind of feel better if you wrote something on a piece of paper, if it's like a negative thought or, you know, things like that. I actually felt really nervous about it coming out. I feel like that now, like it's, okay. it came out in the 1st of October, 2018. And then it got reprinted in 2019. I think the first six months, I was just scared to turn on the internet, scared of it, and I might have to look at who'd read it, you know, and whether they'd take me differently. So it didn't really help at that time. No. Now, 
<laughs> now, like all this time on, I feel a lot better about it. I feel like yeah, yeah. no one's judged me. People are still friends with me. I'm you know, all those things that I thought thought were so unforgivable or unlikable and were fine to share. And it mm. made me think, why did I take so long to sort of talk about this? Because for years I had what had happened, especially being so unwell, like buried in this closet. I didn't want anyone to know I'd been in a psychiatric hospital. And yeah. it, then I realized actually it's just, yeah, really not a problem and people are happy to talk about it and ask mm -hmm. me about it. And it does feel a relief, you know, now. But at the first six months, I was just thinking, oh no. Yes, yeah. What's, What's gonna happen, you know? I think a lot of people would just actually look up at you and think, wow, that that is such bravery to, you know, to actually, you have the courage to tell about your story. Not many people will have the courage to do that. So I think that would probably be the first emotion, you know, that people yeah, have. Yeah, wow. I think so. I think so. Um, and now, you know, I do feel like when most people read it, they really find it inspiring. And I, so I hope that that was, that was the thing I wanted from it, mm -hmm. was for people to go, wow, you don't, you know, some people are not ever going to have the severity of what I had. Some people yeah. are just battling with anxiety or depression. And I want those people to know, you know, you can get through it because I was literally probably the most severe like style of mental illness and yeah. you can get through it and you can pull back and it takes time. But in some ways, it, it's almost been also something I could be grateful for in mm -hmm. hindsight. It taught me a lot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You found something at the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So I think you've... Um almost answer this but I'll, I'll, I'll ask this anyway what do you hope to do to help others with mental health issues well there's some very simple tricks and tips that I do every day now and it's been very very useful so you know one of those is to have a journal and I just literally write anything throughout that day that has been upsetting or particular incidents where I felt my mood shifted from you know kind of calm which is how I feel right now Mm -hmm. to some kind of more severe reaction. So I wanted to teach people a little about, you know, the ways you can use some tools to not get stuck in that mental state of mind if you've mm -hmm. had something disappointing happen or upsetting. And it's very useful that I write out everything I'm thinking about it and I look at it and I say, is that true or false? Like each of the particular thoughts, like, if, you know, if I've been fired from a job, underneath all of that, I'll be thinking, well, I'm just hopeless, I'll never eat again, I'm going to be on the streets, you know, mm -hmm. things like those very extreme, you know, thoughts come into my head. And if I write mm -hmm. that all out on a piece of paper, I'm like, well, really, have I ever been on the streets? No. Is that true? No, it's probably false. Yeah. And by just even doing that, I feel like yeah. I just get a lot clearer on the particular incident. Mm -hmm. So that's what I hope to do is just help people and educate people. And I think there's more momentum for it. I mean, have you done any mindfulness training? Have you heard of I it? Have. I used to do mindfulness when I was studying. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, after that, I stopped it because I felt my stress levels went down so much. But I actually know that it's good to do it, even if you don't feel in particular that you have anxiety mm -hmm. or you're not diagnosed with anything. I think mm -hmm. it would be really good to always do it. But yes, I did it every morning. I did mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, it, I found it really helpful. It just calmed me for the day. Um, yeah, it becomes a practice. You probably maybe because you did it so often don't necessarily need to do it every day because now, you know, what I used to have to spend a lot of time writing in my book about, and I mean, I've got, you know, drawers and drawers of books because I do write in it something every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt, I feel now 10 years on, cause I've been doing this pretty, you know, disciplined with processing things for nearly 10 years. That now, 10 years on, some of that doesn't need as much time and work because it's become automatic to go, hang on, I'm just not going to think negatively about that thing. I'm going to switch yeah. it quickly and see, you know, what could be coming that's good out of it. And the other thing that I find interesting is, and I'm curious if you're the same, I find I'm almost more likely to believe the future is the negative version rather than the positive version of that yeah. outcome. <laughs> and I think why, I've got no proof it's yeah definitely yeah. the negative will happen i've got no proof the positive will happen but by believing somehow deep down the negative is more likely to happen i just yeah. weighs on my shoulders so I, do you find that i i always think of the worst case scenario that's me mm -hmm. it's always like it goes from zero to hundred there's nothing in the middle at all so i think mindfulness has helped me to think okay let's let's step back let's think about this 
And also there's another thing you were talking, maybe you're saying something similar, take your thoughts to court. Have you done something like that? Um, no, that's a great saying. Who yeah, that, me that? <laughs> yeah, well, actually, actually, I had some therapy a couple of years ago. And uh, it was there during my therapy that this um, therapist said, well, let's just think about this, uh, what you've just told me, that a belief. So I had a belief. Um, um, and it could be anything that I'm, let's say something really silly, like, oh, I'm stupid. Okay, so let's put that down and let's have the, like, people judging it. And what kind of proof do you have that you are stupid? So let's put down all the proof that you are stupid. And let's put down proof that you are not stupid. And then, and then you kind of see that actually you have more on the, not on the, you know, uh, that it's not correct than, yeah. than on the other side saying that you are stupid. So th this is a, some kind of like a thing that you can do uh, just yourself at home. That's really similar to what I do in the way that I go, is that true or false? I guess that's taking my thought to court. But I love that, the fact that that rhymes. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's yeah. what it was called. So, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it was kind of a good good exercise to do. I would I recommend it for everybody. Yeah, that's great. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. I think taking our thoughts to court is really important because we have these really, you know, overactive minds, which is great. That's how we're creative as artists mm -hmm. and books wouldn't get written, you know, movies wouldn't get made. Gosh, we'd be very boring if our imagination yeah. wasn't so vivid. But yeah. the thing is, sometimes your imagination is your worst enemy if you let yourself believe these negative thoughts. Yeah. And if you believe predictions of the future that you don't know are true or yeah. not true. So I found that that has been really powerful. And actually also then challenging some of those underlying beliefs like, if I've lost a job, it must be because I'm not good enough or really I'm yes. flawed or a failure and no one ever liked me anyway. And, you know, and I just like write all that out and then I just think, well, no, actually, it's not true. Um, you know, I'm not a fraud. Yeah. I'm actually really genuine and I'm really good at what I did. You know, so there's been a lot of ways I've just been able to use these things mm -hmm. in the past and even feedback from a show. Someone might say something on social media, you know, someone might say something in the press. I mean, you know, reviews can be pretty uh honest and brutal and sometimes yeah. not very uh sensitive because that's what they're supposed to be yeah. you know but actually then dissecting that is really important so i think yeah it's really helped me to just be more level-headed calm and so that is something i think that everyone in the burlesque world could use more of because mm -hmm. there's so much stress yeah. and anxiety performing getting on stage when things yeah. go wrong yeah you know i don't even mind I and mean, some now if I make a mistake I've just gotten so you know that used to just be something I would ponder for weeks afterwards and I yeah. wish that that sound hadn't gone wrong and that my bra came off there or that you know the thing just, yeah. I wish and then I just think not I, I can leave those things pretty much straight as they've happened and not have to think about them again yeah and you kind of just beat yourself up about it for days afterwards I mean it, it's crazy yeah mm -hmm. and also I think like the if you have a negative thought then that just sort of spurs on other negative thoughts and it just gets bigger and bigger. Um, so it's really important to realize when you are in a negative state of mind to try and step back from it because then that can really take over that whole day or even more, more than, you know, one day. So um, that's what mindfulness is really good for because you can kind of step on the, look at it from the outside. Definitely. Yeah. Yes, Ninochka's saying our minds can make things a little bit bigger and then they oh, are. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I totally agree with that. So I thought I would just read a little bit about, like, the the techniques that I learned. Um, yes, that's great. Yeah. From the book, because I thought it would be quite useful. I hoped it would be useful. Yeah. Um, People, it's yeah. always good to have new tips and uh, ways of coping strategies. This is in the book. Um about okay. the thing that I found that really changed my life, which was a personal development program called More to Life. So, mm -hmm. um, one observation I will make about catching the train into London is the number of signs that say way out. It is as if everyone who arrives in London is symbolically lost and looking to find an escape. People, tourists and residents alike wander around the complex underground system, faithfully following the way out signs. As I boarded, the train at Waterloo to Covent Garden, I wondered too if I would find my way out this weekend. I felt stuck like the needle of a record on a broken groove. I was frequently happy, carefree and joyous. 
Yet occasionally this foreboding would infringe on my serenity. Occasionally I would explore different counseling methods and even meditation techniques, but I could not shake the sense there was another way out of this broken groove. As I entered the room for the More to Life weekend, I had to fill in my personal details and the form asked if I had any pre-existing mental health issues. In hushed tones, I explained to a registrar at the table I had experienced a bipolar episode and I was worried that whatever they were going to do on this course might make me relapse or trigger something. Although it had been seven years since my hospitalisation, I was always cautious. I still felt a deep shame about my breakdown, but I didn't want it publicly known. With kind eyes, the lady at the front desk explained it was absolutely fine. She told me to relax and enjoy the day without giving it another thought, but that I could speak to any of the team on hand if I needed any help, and she would make sure the trainers knew my medical history. I walked into the room and it was pleasantly lit with flowers decorating the front table and calming music. Other participants arrived. I counted at least 60 seats and slowly the room filled. I was on high alert and a twinge of suspicion still tweaked at the back of my mind. What was this really about? I thought it might be religious. I thought these people looked too nice and smiley. I'll beat them at their own game, I thought. They're not going to be able to crack me. I did look further into it though. I double, triple checked that it wasn't religious. Mr. Muscles swore there was nothing linked to religion whatsoever and so did the lady who spoke to me when I called to inquire. These feelings were familiar. I'd always had mistrust about something, fearing I might walk back into a religious group. But now I walked into the room and saw everyone's friendly faces. I realized there was nothing to fear. There was no judgment here. I was safe and it was a huge relief. At least it was starting time. Two women, the trainers, walked to the front of the room and down the middle of the aisle rows of seats. So we all clapped as they made their entrance. They were very smartly dressed and had my full attention. They stood next to signs that had one word in capital letters, notice. And so from that point on in the story, I talk about noticing and that is what I literally did. They made us uh, a graph with negative emotions at the top and positive, sorry, positive emotions at the top and negative below this line. And they yeah. said, we want you to notice when you go below or above the line on this weekend and where are you all right now? And so people started to say, you know, how they felt. And that is one of the tricks that I've done. Do they teach that in, in mindfulness too, sort of noticing your emotional state? Yeah. It, it's sort of like saying, noticing um, what kind of, um, how are you feeling at the moment? Yes. I mean, there's, there's a few different ways, but um, the one I was doing was just trying to, you know, tell you not to go with the train of your thought that just, you know, trying to be there and just feel your, what kind of things can you feel in your body and what kind of things can you maybe hear? Because obviously you, you have your eyes closed. So what kind of sensations you have around your body and within your body? Mm -hmm. I don't think they went so much into the actual emotion that you might have. And even if you did feel an emotion, you, they say, even if you feel sadness, that's okay. But let's mm -hmm. just try to fo you know, focus on the actual the, the possible things that you can feel or maybe hear around you. And mm -hmm. it's going to push those away. So you can kind of see, it's more like kind of clouds and they're trying to see the blue sky between the clouds. Mm -hmm. but that was what I did. Um, but there's lots of different types. Yeah. Well, so that, that is, yeah, essentially just, just feel very grateful that it's World you know, Mental Health Awareness Week and that 21 years on, I mean, it does seem a long time ago. But actually, even 10 years later, I was still battling with a lot of anxiety. Like at the time I'm talking about in this book, I had chronic anxiety, chronic. It was just, you know, so to be here for Mental Health Awareness Week 21 years on from 10 or 11 years of doing really a lot of personal development work and practicing in my journal and learning a lot of tools. I feel so grateful because I have really climbed and conquered that mountain. I'm not going to say that that means you don't ever get upset, that you don't have yeah. a bad day. You're not prone oh, no. to depression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just means that there's, you know, I'm, I'm very much more aware of when I slip into it and I've got a choice to look at it and to be more diligent in how I then use it to, make better choices and do I want to stay in that mood or is there something I can actually do yeah to move I it
think there's some kind of comment as well from Lady Winkard that during my hardest years, Burles was the only thing I had real, a real passion to. So mm -hmm. I can truly believe that Burles can save lives. It can save or keep the desire for life alive. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Just kidding, those reader. Yeah, definitely. And it's I so know nice it. to hear that. Mm -hmm. I, thanks so much, Lady Winkart. That's a beautiful statement. Is Lady Winkart also from Finland? Yes, she is, yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing! Another Finn. <laughs> Yay! Well, yeah. the more the better, because this lovely Finnish Lady Sugar Cane is so amazing. I'm sure you're all incredibly lovely. <laughs> so, well, be nice to oh, have Oh, there you are, yeah. <laughs> So that's really great. I just thought it was a very short um, time I wanted to, to share and thank you for, for doing the interview. Oh, absolutely. It was my pleasure. And I, I really recommend this book for everybody to read. It's, um, it's set on sale on Amazon, for example. Um, that's where I found mine. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a good read. And it kind, of, it kind of makes you feel nice that in a way that someone else might you know has some issues as well and you know uh and and um so you kind of don't feel so alone yes have experience you know. i think there's i think there's more people talking about this stuff now than when what i went through happened i also think yeah. it's changed a lot and there is more it's definitely momentum definitely more openness so yeah but still more needs to be t talked about it and it needs to be less, uh, the stigma needs to be lifted. Mm. Um, it, it, that still seems to follow. And, and you know, obviously things, the way things are in UK it doesn't mean that's how they're everywhere else. Oh. Not at all. So, um, mm. yeah, we'll just have to keep it going and keep talking about it. I think that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. And keep writing amazing books. Maybe you'll write another book, do you think? I'd like to. I don't know what, but I, I definitely feel like there's another one. I've started a few, but they're all kind of bubbling away. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing about the book is it's also available as an ebook, And so if people don't want to buy the physical book, you can mm -hmm. just put it on a Kindle or, you know, it's easier to read. And I'm yeah. looking into doing an audio book, you know, where you can listen to it. Because have you ever listened to an audio book yourself, Sugar? I have. Actually, it's really enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. I used to do it all the time when I was working um, as an accountant. I had like a book and I was just, you know, going for it. <laughs> You've been an accountant as well. You're an assistant accountant, yeah. <laughs> well, I can't do numbers and listen to someone speaking. That's amazing. You've got. Well, that's why I. It kind of went, but if I, if I was, I don't know. So because it's numbers and then speech, I thought that went. But, but you know, one funny thing was I couldn't listen to English though. I had to listen to Finnish uh, books. Thing. and then I could so it's like a different code yeah. <laughs> something yeah. like that <laughs> well I listened to my first audiobook this year and realized it's actually a very lovely way to in, absorb a book it mm. doesn't yeah it, it doesn't mean you you take it in less and and I thought I would but actually I found yeah so I'm, I'm looking into doing this as an audiobook or finding a way to do it so mm. we'll see if it becomes an audiobook but tomorrow we'll be back um online and we'll be talking to Lacey Nickers and oh, we're going to post um we're going to post a few chapters being read tomorrow in the feed because she she runs book lovers burlesque oh and don't forget we need glove peels so if you've got rubber oh, gloves if you've got evening gloves it just needs to be a glove peel for the glove peel challenge people there's prizes to be won we've been giving away stickers yes <laughs> peel off your glove yes peel those gloves off Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. It was lovely to hear um, your thoughts and tips and also hear from the book. And um, so we're going to hear more chapters from this book uh, later this week. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Well, I hope you have a lovely evening and I hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So that was the lovely Sapphira, uh, the woman behind World Burlesque Day. And also I'm going to show it to you once again. I've chosen many times the author of Burlesque or Bust. Um, do, you know, read this book. It's, it's a lovely thing to read. And um, if you have ever suffered from mental health issues, or even if you haven't, um, it, I recommend it 100%. I'm going to participate to glove peeling challenge yay lady wing card i can't wait to see your video 
Nobody. How about anybody else? Yes, come on. Other people as well, join in. I'm not wearing gloves right at the moment, but yeah, if you just peel a glove, you don't have to be a burlesque performer. You just get those gloves off and have fun with it. That's the main thing, have fun. <laughs> well, unfortunately now, um, this little live um, transmission has come to its end. Um, I hope that you know you show kindness and acceptance to people who suffer with mental health problems, whether that's yourself, please be kind to yourself, or whether it's those around you, please be kind to them. And have a lovely evening, and please do have a look at the World Burlesque Day posts later on this week as well. There's going to be more from the book and uh, also some more hopefully glove peel challenge videos <laughs> but now it is good night to all of you bye bye my lovelies Mwah. have a lovely evening